so many worlds, but connecting them all is dust. Dust was here before the witches of the air, the Egyptians of the water, and the bears of the ice. In my world, scholars invented an alethiometer, a golden compass, and it showed them all that was hidden. But the ruling power, fearing any truth but their own, destroyed these devices and forbade the very mention of dust. A star is a violent thing in delicate equipoise. It is a raging nuclear reaction that balances itself for billions of years. In the golden compass, stardust is shown to be a mysterious material that bridges the holographic dimensions. The alchemical furnace that burns within each star is then quite similar to the star power that burns within us. That helps us to see the interconnectivity of all things and that paints our existence with an elaborate intelligent design matrix. It's no wonder then that the NWO-like organization in the film would do anything possible to prevent this knowledge from escaping to the public. They even had a facility at the North Pole that was designed to separate children from their souls, or daemons, to rid them of their curiosity of dust. And as Nicole Kidman's character ironically states, helps them to grow up. The mythos surrounding the pole span from the origins of a unified solar religion, entrance ways to the hollow earth, and subterranean Nazi bases. The latter is interesting because many thousands of years ago, if one were to view Urza Major throughout the procession of the seasons, it would paint a swastika in the sky and many believe this is in fact the origin of the ancient symbol. Recently, Project Camelot came across a 400-page book written in German that speaks about just such a Nazi base. It was originally of extraterrestrial origin, but now is called New Berlin. It states the reason why there are so many human scientists on the base is because this is the place where many exotic phenomena can be observed, like vectorial viewing into the future, soul travel via machine, technical telepathy, or living another's experiences by proxy. The swastika or black sun motif is often substituted by the symbol of the polar bear. Sir Ian McKellen syncs up with this trend as he voices the warrior bear in the golden compass, was the narrator of the film Stardust, plays a Nazi war criminal in the apt pupil, and of course was our all-seeing eye destroyer in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. As McKellen drifts off through his own personal stargate to the other side, atop a K2 resonating mountain range, he is miraculously resurrected in classic Christ Horus fashion. His appearance now, bright white, resembling Quasit Kotal in both knowledge and stature. Notice the interchangeability of time travel, the afterlife, and the opening of cosmic wormholes. Death is simply a transfiguration of matter from one vibration to another, as seen in string theory. It cannot be created nor destroyed. We are the eternal polygons in the green reign of the universe. The golden ring, an ancient symbol in alchemy also represented by the serpent eating its own tail. As the synchro web would have it, Viggo Mortensen, McKellen's co-star in The Lord of the Rings, resonates with Urza Major the Bear as well in the film Eastern Promises. He has four stars tattooed on his body, two on his shoulders and two on his knees. He also spills blood in a Christ-like fashion on the checkerboard Stargate. Mila Jovovich plays Alice in more ways than one in the latest Resident Evil flick entitled Extinction. She also walks the checkerboard hallway as seen in the now famous crop circle correlated with Aldous Huxley's The Doors of Perception. There is heavy symbolism in this one. Knights of Malta crosses inside the octagon again point to the ancient solar religion.
A Beast of Revelations, the psionic Cthulhu rising occurred in the film Cloverfield, a phenomenon that has been occurring at least aesthetically a lot more frequently in the media. The title Cloverfield correlates this to the golden four-star theme of this video, as well as the rainbow which is symbolic of the different alchemical stages you must go through to create the Philosopher's Stone, such as the Red Lion. The Leviathan Beast drops Giger-like alien crabs as a foreshadowing of its destructive power. This crab symbolism is also seen in the final chapter of the Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy, as being symbolic of a bridge or gap between the world of the living and the world of the dead. There is also a lot of symbolism involving the Statue of Liberty lately. She is holding the Masonic Torch of Enlightenment, also referred to back in the 1700s by the Illuminati and Masons, as the Flaming Torch of Reason. She can be seen in Resident Evil Extinction, covered by Egyptian-like Nevada Sands, housing ancient Masonic secrets in the latest National Treasure film, and being ripped to bits by our Cthulhu monster here in Cloverfield. The ancient Egyptian, or should I say the modern Martian theme, as per usual, has also been heavy in the pop consciousness. Literal wormholes were created to the capstones of the pyramids in the film Jumpers, which pits our snakes on a plane wrapped caduceus resonating Samuel Jackson as a so-called paladin who murders Stargate travelers. The black and white Stargate symbolism has been tied to race lately, with the film The Bucket List, which is a truncated pyramid, and the recent Barack Obama-Hillary Clinton rivalry. The pentagramic golden star in the movie Kroll is also a representation of ancient Egyptian and Martian structures, much like our pentagon or pentagram. The film deals with a Cthulhu-like dark lord that resides in a black citadel which changes its location on the planet every day at sunrise. The H.P. Lovecraft Mind Flayers, or Illithids, are a metaphor for the reptilian consciousness and all ETs that have aligned themselves with death and chaos. Here is the Dungeons and Dragons description of these Cthulhu-like monsters. Currently, the Illithids are in a period of intense study and experimentation, gathering knowledge of all sorts that will allow them to eventually reconquer the universe and hold it for good. They frequently meddle in the politics of other races through subtle psychic manipulation of key figures to better understand the dynamics of civilization. Sound familiar? They live in a hollow earth type society known as the Underdark, within the concentric circle Atlantean layers of Agartha. The world of Kroll is another dual sun planet, as seen in the recent Tin Man series, Pitch Black, and many other sci-fi flicks. It's actually quite rare to live in a system that isn't binary or having more than one sun. We see the same floating citadel ascension motif in Count Ducula, the Golden Compass, and in the never-ending story. The upcoming Hellboy sequel entitled The Golden Army will deal with a subterranean race of elves that resemble the drow elves of the D&D franchise. They are mortal enemies with the mind players, but in this movie the elves wish to come to the surface and reclaim the earth by killing all of humanity. Being immortal is a lost limb is quickly repaired complete with illithid-like tendrils healing the wound. The full-length version of this video is now available at labyrinthofthepsychonaut.com. I will explore more of the recent National Treasure movie, The Golden Fever and DuckTales, and symbolism involving the Cyclops. Music by Virgin Black, Olver, and The Frozen Autumn. All spoken word for this presentation was recorded during the lunar eclipse, February 20th, 2008.